Welcome, welcome, welcome all the way to the Cartoon Guide to Literal Genetics. Let's get this started. Now, genetics itself is a pretty darn good and a very accurate representation of the world. The thing itself is actually pretty darn really, really, really easy to understand itself. In fact, this book itself published as the second revised edition in 2000 and... Okay, it was actually republished in 1991, apparently. The genetics itself is actually pretty darn good at studying, and it can also even teach you things about it, too. However, only the cover is the color. The inside's all black and white, which kind of sucks. Larry, gotta color your drawings! But let's put that all away, and let's start today with the first part in the four-part series based on the Cartoon Guide to Genetics. First up, genes. Reproduction, religion, and, of course, ATCG. Let's get this started with. Now... Genes themselves are actually pretty easy to make. Well, sort of, principally, if you use the basic ingredients of life. But remember from the cartoon guide of biology, lots of things are actually needed to create the life. Like, create a life, like lipids, water, those kinds of things. But apparently, sugars is all that you need, basically. Like, phospholates, phosphorus, and a bunch of other two molecules are all you need to actually create genes. And then put all those together, is you just create a gene. It's just that pattern matters. Materials are easy to get just to get them to turn into DNA by themselves. Now that's actually pretty hard. Now the thing is, our body is actually pretty good at collecting them. In fact, they've already collected enough to actually recreate things. Every time you actually have a little sperm cell or whatever egg cell, whether you're a girl or a boy, go ahead. You will probably much already have prepared yourself for your uh, reproduction days. That's all I'm going to say. Anyways, because of all these reproduction days, lots of things will start coming up. Uh, I'm not going to get into that until mutations and dominance, but firstly, Gotta talk about religion. Now, let's start off with prehistoric religion. Prehistoric religion itself is pretty weird. Now, of course, nothing was so, no, there was no distinction between living and non-living things. Like humans moved, cats technically moved. Oh, yeah! All right, he's moving by himself. And sometimes, things move by themselves, like the wind, or as also known as invisible pushing force. Pencils move like this. Everything moved, whether by being touched by humans or not. Some things move gently. And so everyone actually thought that plants were also moving too, because they've actually observed them pretty closely, and they moved. Although they didn't move from one position, though. So apparently also things actually had reproduction things. Humans did it, cats did it, mammoths did it, unfortunately for them. But a good, pretty good... Pretty good, pretty good food source, so. And apparently, well, according to the prehistoric mind, technically rocks did it too. Like, I mean, if you strike a rock on a rock, it'll probably just create little baby pebbles. And that's how I actually created my knife. Yeah, also, it's pretty, also, obsidian in real life is really, really weak. You don't need diamond, diamonds, diamond pickaxe to actually break uh, obsidian, though, which is fortunate. Obsidian is actually a pretty weak, pretty weak metal. Iron is a better source. But the next thing that I really want to talk to you guys about is how all of this can actually interfere with our understanding of this place. Let me explain, people. Now, firstly... Genes themselves are interesting. Genes are used to actually go ahead and make this little guy. Me. Uh, my mom. My dad. Everything, in fact. This is pretty much how it works. Also, genes actually give the strength of the person, too. Like, gene determines how that person is going to live. Also, also they can choose to live this way not without any interference from the genes. It's also how they do it. Like, my cat can escape pretty easily if I just stay still. If I stay still. Uh, okay, he decides he he decided he wanted to go underground. Then he realized upper ground is good. And also the only reason why cats have fur and why I don't have any fur technically I do, but to do things, genes are just what determine us. I've already mentioned A, T, C, and G, and those are actually just types of phosphates. Now they are like the binding, the building blocks of the genes themselves. Basically, genes are created with DNA. However, when this notion was actually sent out in the 1940s, no one actually took it pretty seriously. And then suddenly, they're all like, all right, so let me get this straight, gene is important. Yes, 
Well, why is it important? It's the creation of genes. And why are genes important? Without genes, they wouldn't be... We, um, you wouldn't look like that. Without your genes, you wouldn't look like that. And I wouldn't look like me. Wait. Okay, so far so good. Now. How many phosphates are needed to create one strand? Oh, a billion, sir. And how many for just one link? Two or three, sir. Two or three? Is it two or is it three? We're figuring that out, sir. Well, figure it out faster! And apparently, there's these two guys who actually sound like Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Watson and Crick. Watson and Crick. Holmes and Watson. Watson and Holmes. Ha, huh, that actually sounds pretty good. Anyways, they both figured it out. They realized that there are four baselines, technically five if you include RNA, five types of, like, phosphate, and then there were two, three combinations of how they work out. For DNA, there are only four phosphates. A... T C G adenine, cytosine, cytosine, guanine, and for mRNA, messenger RNA, or whatever kind of RNA you do, the kind that COVID nineteen uses, it's actually they they also use four phosphates. Three of them are common common with DNA: adenine, cytosine, adenine, cytosine, cytosine. But instead of like the guanine, they use a U, a uracil, a uris. Yeah, I think it's called uracil. I mean, that happened, and apparently here there are actually six kinds of combination. You can compare, you can pair A to T, and you can pair C to G, and U only, U only works with C, apparently. It can also connect to C. So yeah, that's actually pretty good. Anyways, that happened, and literally the whole, pe everyone's minds were blown. And then they're like, why did this one use a U instead of, I don't know, a G? Because it's RNA, what does that have to do with it? To be honest, I still have no idea. Seriously, and that happened, and literally genetics itself is still going on. Sure, we've known more than we did, like since our prehistoric days, and we've also realized that you can't have uh, babies and eggs. You can't have one without the other. Does that happen? And you just can't do any. Just, you just can't do any of that with anyone else. So that's probably important. So I'm gonna explain to you guys about dominance, egg like chromosomes next 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 video next part and i guess i'll see you guys then but one last note about genes before i end this video on a high note genes are important they are mutatable and they clump together but they're pretty hard to see in fact the only reason why we know they're there is because whenever we tr see we whenever we uh, look at it through a microscope of two cells the spur us dividing we only see, we saw you see that little line and we think that hey how is this hand appear there and suddenly disappear and then we always think that genes are there but this is actually chromosomes and i'll explain to you guys in the next episode so hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode hope to see you guys soon until next time shout out peace and always remember to wear a literal helmet so you can protect your head